Okay, you ready for some more slugfest on the satire of these verses? In the top window, I shortened it a little bit so you can see both at the same time, is Ephesians 1, 4. And at the bottom here is Anononinomenon, his parsing of Matthew 24. And we just finished going through, slugging through. Uh, Matthew 24 verse 4 where poor Nero dies right here at Blep and he wasn't seeing a thing because he was dead and of course we weren't seeing a thing when we were alive either because we were all busy whether we were Christians or Jews fighting with each other wandering like sheep and and going in one faction or the other in Jerusalem fighting with the result that the temple gets taken down here Hagios and then you really do become holy ones because you got executed by Titus because you were too damn dumb not to get out of town when what this later text in Matthew 24 tells you was gonna happen Ding! All right, so now we're going to go a little bit slower because this is a little harder to go through and yet it's funnier. Now here we're at verse 5, Matthew 24, 5. Okay, and here he's saying, you know, many's going to many gonna come in my name saying that I'm Christ. And many are going to be deceived. That's the whole text here. Many coming in my name saying I'm Christ. And many are going to be deceived. See, because he said, don't be deceived. So, of course, we will be. So, that's what verse 5 covers. And it's 32 salvos. So, that's the next 32 years after 77. See, what if the rapture in 66? What if the rapture, and when they were really expecting it, was when the temple went down? Okay, and then Paul, um, John, is going to date his um, gospel. Um, seven years after the temple goes down and that was when we were supposed to maybe be raptured up then and all be blameless but of course we're not and we're very blameful and so instead of being pronounced holy and blemish free by the end of 21 years that ends right here because we were planaoing we were wandering we're in this position of still being on earth, not seeing a thing. Okay, so the rapture didn't happen on time according to the original expectation. There were several different expectations based on when Abraham's credit was going to be repaid. I've gone through that in the Pauline videos already. Um, and I'm not going to go through it here because I want to just show you how the text is satirical. So here we are at 78, okay, Christ age 78, for all intents and purposes, you can call it 78 AD, you might even be able to call it, um, you know, 77 or even 80, okay, but we're going to pretend for the sake of argument that we're going to call it 77 so it's easier to follow, because in their BC AD system that the Bible was using, that the writers and the people were using, because they had the same BCAD problem we do. They just used Christ age and dispensed with the differential. Because Varro did the calendar wrong and it was law by the time Paul is writing. So they just said, okay, we're just going to use Christ age. All right? So, roughly, roughly, we'll say, roughly 78 AD, 77, end of 77, 78 AD. That's when verse 5 starts in Matthew. Okay, and it's covering the next 32 years. So, so, oh, I can't get the cal I can't get the calculator to come up. Okay, wait a minute, let me go get mine. And this particular computer's got weird quirks. Okay, so what we're trying to find out here is 77 plus 32, 77 plus 32 is up to 109 A.D. So we're going past the year of the four emperors, 
and so we want we're going from 77 okay this is Vespasian he dies approximately just before Pompey exploded okay we're going through the period of Titus we're going past the period of Domitian and the ending period is 109 which is during the reign of Trajan okay so what is a tax? Paul benchmarks it differently from Christ so this is why it's a little more sophisticated now one of the things you need to understand about this is that the reason one of the reasons why the metering changes when Paul writes is Paul's writing 23 years later and the whole theme of this is how church causes history now you don't need to know the meter to know that that's the theme that's the theme of the chapter in the text my pastor spent seven whopping years going through the exegesis of Ephesians to explain that very point it's called 1985 Ephesians and you can get it for free they don't you know send you money begging letters or anything at www.rbtheme.org okay so once you understand that then you'll know that this is dynamic Christ is saying this based on the way church is at the time Paul is writing an updated version of it, of course, still under the Holy Spirit, based on how history has changed as a result of Christian growth. That's the theme of the book. Okay, so the benchmarks here are not, you know, exactly 32. He's benchmarking it at different points for different growth periods like here between 77 and 84 for Christians it's a particularly important period so it's got as it were a tribulation 7 quality to it okay you know when you're under stress you grow a lot but you're also under a lot more stress and that's the, the point of a 7 7 means promise in Hebrew okay and so Paul benchmarks his text at 94, 105 and 114 and these do correspond to our ADs I've already done the video showing how well you can know that. And he's getting ready to get into his first anaphora, his first dilematos anaphora, which is that eta right there, is where um, Trajan dies. Okay, but we're not that far along yet. We're at 105, 106, 107, 108, just a ka of kata. All right? Right there is 109. So it's in the process of something else going on, all right? And in the larger context, okay, there's, how do I want to put this? Because it doesn't seven then, it means that the growth is a little too slow. Spiritual growth is too slow, okay? So Christ is covering the same period in verse 5, okay? Many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and they will deceive many. Okay, well, this is why growth was slow during that period. People were listening to, you know, because they were expecting, you know, Paul's doing a what if the rapture timeline here. And now we're past Paul in his text. He's already dead. He died in 68. All right. We're past Paul. And he's now explaining, you know, the growth of church, and actually he's forecasting how church goes apostate. And why is it going apostate? Why is it being deceived? Okay? Because they wanted the rapture to happen. They were drooling over the rapture then, the way we're drooling over it now. If you're busy drooling over the rapture, you're not busy learning and living on Bible. Is the rapture pre-trib rapture valid doctrine? Yes. Why is it in the Bible? Because it's basically to make good on an accounting problem that Israel had. And she still had some years left over before, you know, she rejected Christ. Okay, so we don't know when we're going to die. And we don't know when church is going to die. So what the rapture should be worrying you about is not, what are the, what are the historical events that we see on TBN? No, you should be worried about whether you're growing up today. Hebrews 3, while it is yet today, learn and live on Bible and grow in Christ because you don't know if you're going to die and you don't know if the church is going to go up. That's what you're supposed to learn from the rapture doctrine. All right? 
and people weren't doing that. Just like, you know, back here, remember? Back here, back here, which I haven't covered exactly yet why Paul is sticking it there. Okay, right here, the disciples. They're all busy drooling. They go to him on, on Man of Olives, and they say, Oh, what are going to be the signs of your coming and the end of the age? They don't care about Bible. They don't care about truth. They don't care about spiritual growth. What they care about is signs they can drool over. And that's why he starts out by saying, See to it that you're not deceived. And the only way you're not going to be deceived is if you forget about that question and just learn and live on Bible. But they won't. So that's why they were looking for, oh, I'm the Christ, I'm back. You know, the rapture's happening now, I'm back. Except that's not the way the doctrine even worked. So there were lots of people telling themselves and fooling others, saying, oh, I'm here, I'm here. Or, and they just skip over the rapture, some of them entirely, and say, I'm the second coming. And we got those same people today. There's some guy in Brazil calling himself Henry Christ. There's some woman that was interviewed on YouTube calling herself the Maitreya, which is another way of saying Messiah. I mean, it's crazy. All right? So people are constantly drooling over the signs of the times and they don't grow. So... This is not seven. It's 32. This, that, this is really pregnant here. Christ died when he was 33, okay? So they don't come to fruition. It's, he's making an analogy to his own life. His own life. Because he knows he's going to die in two months. That's what he's busy telling them here in Matthew 24 with the meter. Well, you don't even make it to age 33, honey. Because you're busy thinking, see, because Christ died at age 33. Ha ha. Everybody's saying that they're me, except that, see, I'm here right now, and I'm actually 33, not 32, but you're going to fall short. This is the kind of cleverness in Greek meter. Okay, I mean in Greek, in Greek drama. All right? Everybody going to come around and say, I'm a Christ and deceive many, and therefore you ain't going to grow. And by the time Paul writes 23 years later, the timeline changes as a result of that. History, as it were, retards. It slows down. It gets worse. So what do you do then? Well, you remember, you know, where God's got you, where he wants you to go. See, you might be today before him, meaning dead, by his standard. Got the nopio nato. That could happen to you today. It could happen to me today. All right, so then I'm not going to sit here and worry about historical trends because all I got is today, Hebrews 3. All right? And what's really cute, this is this is um, part of verse 4, but it's treated syntactically as if it's also part of verse 5. And agape, pro hemas, by means of love he fordained us. Okay? When you get through today, Today, you might be before him. Today, you are by means of love, in love, his love, inside his love location. Foreordained by. Okay? That's what you live on now. And if you're not doing that, well then, hello, you're going to be, you're going to be all, all, you know, wandering around, short, by people who aren't even my age, but so they're gonna say that they're me. How can you? How can you be so stupid? Well, because we are. We're sheep. So these are like this is really biting sarcasm because you got two options. You can be in the spirit and living on the Bible. That's what Paul's saying here, as far as the Christian goes. Or you can be all deceived and drooling over the uh, historical events. And then you're going to be cannon fodder for anybody who claims to be Christ. Now, when it says somebody claiming to be Christ, that means anybody claiming to be the Savior, anybody claiming to be, you know, I've got the divine revelation from God. And, of course, nothing they say lines up with the Bible. You're going to be a sucker for all that. So this is a stark contrast. During the period from 77 to 109, 
going all the way down to here. You can be in the doctrine, in which case this is how you're going to be thinking. Or you can be out of the doctrine and drooling over events, in which case you're going to be a sucker for some guy claiming that the end is coming, you know, tomorrow. So that you can drool over historical events and not learn a thing. Those are your two stark choices. Well, Rome was facing the same series of choices here. It's really interesting how this period of history works out. Because from, I mean, I'm, it's going past, you know, Vespasian and Titus and all that into um, Trajan. But see, this is the time specifically of Trajan, where the end point is to agree with Plan et Susin. Okay, so the end point here highlighted, I'm sorry, in gray, agrees with what, what I'm sorry, is highlighted in blue, green, yellow, down here in the lower window. Now that stands for being deceived being led astray, wandering, there's a key word, wandering. The Hebrew equivalent for this is Hebrew, means to wander like a sheep. That's what planaho means, that's highlighted down here. Wander, wander away from the truth, wander away and get your attention on something else, that's what sheep are famous for. Okay, well, here's the funny part about this, here's the satire. Trajan was known for wandering around the Roman Empire and trying to get it to be as big as possible. And he almost bankrupted the Roman Empire by so doing. Okay? Hadrian, uh, Trajan will end up dying right here at the Ada and Telemotos. The next guy after Trajan in 117 AD is Hadrian. And Hadrian ends up rolling back all of the wandering gains of Trajan because they can't afford to administer an empire that big. All right? So what wandering does, and it's really, it's, it's a very, you know, kind of embarrassing commentary. What wandering does, it, it makes you go far this to the left, far to the right, far to the north, far to the south, until you get overextended. And you become spiritually bankrupt, just like Rome almost became financially bankrupt because of all the wandering that Trajan did. See, that's the key word the Lord is using right here. And in our text with Paul, and I've already covered Trajan much more extensively in the Pauline videos, that ends right here, which is really hysterical because it's saying toward him according to or into him according to except that it doesn't quite finish Trajan didn't quite finish his objective he dies pretty much while he's on campaign so it isn't kata kata would mean according to per by the standard of okay well he didn't meet his standard he didn't meet his goal he dies in the middle of it see this is the kind of wit divine wit on a prophetic satire of history that helps you know, you know what, I really do have the Word of God. It's really from God. And by the way, 2,000 years later, I really got the right words because they match up with history in a satirical way that depends on you knowing what that history is so you can get the joke. So the first one to make that joke is Christ right here. Okay, because one of the other things that Trajan imagined himself, he imagined himself the savior of Rome. Okay, that's why he was going all the way to the left, all the way to the right, all the way north, all the way south to make Rome the biggest and greatest empire since Alexander. Not paying much attention to the fact that the treasury was depleted. So instead of making Rome great, again, he almost bankrupted her, kind of like Donald Trump, okay? So, wandering is your key word, your key satirical word there. And then correspondingly in Paul, I mean, there's more to it than that, because these were known as the adoptive emperors, and this is sonship, heirship, but I'm leaving all that out. The key word here to tie to Matthew 24 is that Paul is stopping it there, ka. And then the key word that corresponds to it down here in Matthew 24 is plan and shushing. Okay? Wandering. 
Yep, that's what Trajan did. That's what Christians did. This is why our growth slowed down. This is why the meter is not the same. This is one continues 32 that's still nasty because it's not seventh. It means Christianity isn't growing like the, it isn't going to grow the way it's supposed to. And it turns out it's a little bit better because we got some 70 here at 84 and, and 105. But it's still not good enough so that by the time we get to Ka to correspond to planet planning Shushin. Church is still not getting a good report card, okay? Now that covers verse 5. If you're not exhausted already, I'll try to do another video, but right now I'm exhausted.